Well, ST3 is in the house. G'day everybody and welcome back. Yes, I've got a few jobs I need to do on this bike. My primary concern is the front end and the handling of the bike. During the sausage tour we had lots of twisties and uh, it felt a little bit vague in a few areas. The, the bike trams very dramatically, like if there's a, a, the slightest deviation in the road or a line in the bitumen, um, it will track it, it'll follow it. It'll even do it uh, on painted double white lines. It's like you, if you've ever ridden a bike that's got no fork oil in it or something like that. It's, it's, it's that kind of feel. And it would shudder up through um, under hard braking, even medium braking. So I've checked already the steering stem bearings uh, are up to tension and there doesn't feel like there's any play in there. So I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable it's not the steering stem bearings. Um, but I thought, right, this suspension, just I just need to go back to basics and start again. So I went to set the sag, and I thought I'd just um, put all of the dampers in, in the neutral position and, and start from there. This bike has upgraded forks. I'm fairly lucky about that. Um, somebody has fitted forks either out of a ST4S or an ST3S. So this particular um, motorcycle has rebound and compression damping, whereas most ST3s came out with only preload adjustment. So yeah, I thought I'd, I'd set everything up and then and start making adjustments and see if that was a problem. And I should probably change the fork oil. Um, that went through my mind as well, but then I found an issue. Let me explain. Okay, so with these forks, we obviously have our preload adjusters here, and our uh, these are the rebound dampers on the top. So, excuse the uh, <laughs> the adjustable spanner. The reasons I'm using that will become apparent in a minute. I put a socket on these preload adjusters and went to make some changes to them, and this right one just didn't seem right. So I took, the, I took the spanner out to, to have a look. So as you can see with this one, as we turn the, the preload um, adjuster, it works as it's intended. I can wind that all the way in till it bottoms out and I can back it all the way off. However, on this side, that entire damper assembly is rotating with it and it doesn't screw in and out. It just sits there and spins. So something has failed in this cap. Okay, so it's got a broken leg. So first focus will be to obviously pull the wheel off um, and get this right hand fork off the bike. I'll strip it down, inspect and see if we can't ascertain what's gone wrong up there and then I might have to source some parts or whatever. Um, Last case, sorry, worst case scenario is I'll have to fork out for some new cartridges. That's not particularly cheap. Um, there are lower cost variants on the market, um, but I probably wouldn't go down that route. I will make my decision once I get this apart. There's a company on the mainland called Suspension R Us. While they don't catalogue used parts, they keep a shit cart load of uh, old components. And whilst talking to them on the phone, he said to me that it's more than likely that they will have the parts that I need if I can't rectify the problem myself. So we need to strip a few things out of the way. Um, obviously mudguard off, lower fairing off so I can put my jack under there, take the weight off the front wheel, get it out of here and um, pull these forks down and let's see what we can find. We'll put new fork oil in both. The seals don't leak um, unless of course there's no oil left in them. But I'm not, I don't think I'll be pulling it right now and replacing the seals and bushes at this stage. I'll, I'll make my decision after I've got this fork out and pop that cartridge out and we'll have a better look and then we'll know where we're at. Rightio, the frocks are off. It's not an overly onerous job on this thing to take the whole side fairings off as one unit. 
However, putting them back on can be a pain in the neck with this on the ST3s with this um, bolt that goes down through here and the and the bracket there. If anyone knows any tricks, let me know. I do, I know that if you loosen them off, like strip it the whole thing out and loosen this whole nose fairing off around the the mounts for the mirrors and that it can be a bit easier but there's got to be a better way anyway so mug guard off fairings off i don't own a fork vice so to make life easy i'm going to um, loosen off these caps on the top before we go any further so to do that i want to un just undo the bolts for the for the handlebars swing them a bit out of the way and loosen off the top yoke bolts so that um, we're not squashing the top of the tube and I can crack those nuts and um, on the on the top of the fork cartridge for the fork cap spit it out Andy He's loose and sliding on the on the tube. That's good. All right. As the bar's loose, that's that top yoke. Right, the seam loose. This is a thirty two millimeter socket. Struth. <sighs> That's that correct. do the other side because we'll change the oil in these forks like I said. I might put an extension on it. That one wasn't quite as hard. Okay, let's get this fork out. I'll just crack this axle, it's 28 mil. Well, everything's still connected. This hasn't been, this hasn't been aligned correctly either so you can't actually get a screwdriver up to adjust the lower uh, compression damping screws. I'm just going to jack this up now, knock the axle out and remove the wheel. Uh, I don't know how tight that axle is, it didn't seem too bad. Oh, that should go all right. <coughs> I might just drop that back down so the wheel's just touching actually. I've done that far to fall.
catch any spaces. Like a dumbass, I probably should have cracked the calipers while I'm at it. Just leaving these hanging by the hoses for the moment and then when I get the forks out I'll just cable tie them up so they're not hanging on the hoses. While the front wheel's out I'm going to put new rotors on it and new wheel bearings at the same time. Now, these two guys fork out. And then we have it, 143 millimeter shower fork. Right, that's them um, cable tied up so they're not hanging by the hose. Fork legs out, let's go and pull it apart. Right, fast forward to the workshop workshop. Um, I don't. There's some things that aren't adding up here. I don't believe that these are out of um, an ST3S or an ST4S. The first giveaway for me was I think that they're um, titanium nitrite coated fork tubes on the um, fully adjustable ones. And these definitely are not because usually... The inner leg, the staunching tube, would be gold in colour. Uh, the other thing that is a bit surprising is that there is no adjustment in the bottom. So the compression damping is non-existent in this fork. It is only the um, rebound damping. And the other thing is, uh, I think I might, might know what's going on here. I think this has just come unscrewed off the um, off of the cartridge assembly, so we'll get to pulling that cap off, compress the spring, and see what we can see. Alrighty, actually, I'll just try and uh, it's just turning. Let's just uh, remove, remove this cap. It's come unthreaded out of this is the thread in here it's it's unthreaded itself from the um, from the top cap so I'll get we'll compress this spring and um, release the nut and see what what's going on there
I made this spring compressor. They want over 250 Australian dollars dollars for these, and there's less than 30 dollars worth of materials in it. But what we need to do is compress that spring down so that we expose this nut and we'll take this cap apart. I should try and see if I can just screw that back in. Yeah, I think we're underway. I'll remove it. I'll remove it anyway, we're here now. All right, so what are we looking at here? It wasn't too horrible. This has unscrewed out of the cap. Uh, I'm going to try and see what we can... See if I can get that out of the top. I might hold that and try and turn this down and make sure we clear okay there. It might actually be better holding that in the vise, but I've sort of lay, laid this out how it came out too. That um, is what this three-legged, three-pinned assembly in here acts on uh, and then pushes on this nylon spacer and this steel cap and that's what compresses the spring as you wind the damper, sorry, the preload adjustment in. So just sort of keeping all that in order. And we're going to put new oil in this anyway, so we might as well empty it out. This is the, the spacer tube and the steel washer that act on top of the spring. pretty mucky. So recapping I guess. Cap, tube, the top of the assembly and then the spring itself. Homemade spring compressor. You can you can buy and you'll see advertise those ones where you push down on the spring and then put a, a, a clip in there. I've heard that these springs are very hard to compress. If you're working by yourself, it can be a bit difficult. You really need someone to push down and compress the spring while you put the clip in. So um, that's why I made that one. Yep, we're away. Excellent. A cross is subverted. Let's give that a bit of a clean. It's a little wire clip on there. Just removing.
a little bit of wizard's piss. Yes, yeah, so I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I'd say somebody has bought a set of caps off um, a different bike or a different shock that fit. Maybe someone stove the front of a ST3 into something and bent the forks and was wrecking it. Who knows? Should just be a couple of O-rings in this. Got him. Oh yes, there's an O-ring in there. There's an O-ring there. Here's that three-legged thing that fits down through those holes. And that's what presses down on that steel washer that puts the preload on the spring. Just going to give this a clean up and I'll be back and I'll just put this back together. Okay, all shiny clean. Pop our post down in there. Leave the post out for now, just uh, careful not to squash anything, and again, being careful not to squash anything. Very careful not to damage that little post thing. So I put a bit of silicon release compound on there because I don't have any fork oil at the moment. Been on there as well. Bought one. Put our clip, our clip back on. That should limit its travel. Should come up against the stop. Yep, right there. And if we wind it in, you can see the pegs coming out of the um, bottom of the housing. And that's what acts on the top of the spring. Right. Whew. That's alright. Didn't have to shell out for cartridges. What I am going to do though is pop everything in bags because um, I don't have fork oil and I still haven't decided whether or not I'm going to put any new seals and that in it while I'm at it. I mean, the common sense would say just strip the entire fork and rebuild it. Um, but sometimes you replace components that you don't bloody well need to. However, it's probably easy to get in and clean everything if I strip it completely. So leave me with that and we'll be back. <laughs> 